Section 1 of Crime, Its Causes and Remedies by Cesar Lombroso. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Leon Harvey. Crime, Its Causes and Remedies. Part 1. Etiology of Crime. Chapter 1. Meteorological and Climatic Influences, Months, High Temperatures. Subchapter 1. Meteorological and Climatic Influences. Every crime has its origin in a multiplicity of causes, often interwined and confused, each of which we must, in obedience to the necessities of thought and speech, investigate singly. This multiplicity is generally the rule with human phenomena, to which one can almost never assign a single cause unrelated to others. Everyone knows that cholera, typhus, and tuberculosis have specific causes, but no one would venture to maintain that meteorological, hygienic, and psychic factors have nothing to do with them. Indeed, the best observers often remain undecided as to the true specific cause of any given phenomenon. Subchapter 2. Extreme Temperature Among the determining causes of all biological activity are reckoned meteorological phenomena, and among these is heat. Thus the leaves of Drosera rotundifolia, after having been immersed in water at 110 degrees Fahrenheit, become infected and more sensitive to the action of nitrogenous substances. But at 130 degrees Fahrenheit, they no longer show any infection, and the tentacles are temporarily paralyzed, not regaining their mobility until immersed in cold water. Physiology and statistics show that most human functions are subject to the influence of heat. It is to be expected, then, that excessive heat will have its effect upon the human mind. History records no example of a tropical people that has not fallen into subjection. Great heat leads to overproduction, which in turn becomes a cause, first, of an unequal distribution of wealth, and then as a consequence of great inequality in the distribution of political and social power. In the countries subject to great heat, the mass of the people count for nothing, they have neither voice nor influence in the government, and, though revolutions may often occur, these are but palace revolutions, neither uprisings of the people who attach no importance to them. Buckle, among other reasons, finds an explanation in the fact that the dwellers in hot countries need less food, clothing and fuel, and do not possess the power of resistance which dwellers in colder countries acquire in their contest with nature. On this account, tropical peoples are more inclined to inertia, to the use of narcotics, to the passive meditation of the yogi, and to the extravagant ascetism of self-torture of the fakir. The inertia brought on by the heat and the constant feeling of weakness that follows it, renders the constitution more liable to convulsions, and favours the tendency to vague dreaming, to exaggerated imagination, and in consequence to fanaticism, at once religious and despotic. From this condition of things flows a naturally excessive licentiousness, alternating with the excessive ascetism as most brutal absolutism alternates with the most unrestrained anarchy. In cold countries, the power of resisting hardship is greater, owing to the expenditure of energy necessary in preparing food, clothing, and fuel. But just for that reason, a visionary and unstable character is less frequent, an excessive cold making the imagination active, the mind less irritable and less inconstant. The contest with the cold consumes energy that would otherwise have been available for the social and personal activity of the individual, from this fact, and from the depressing effect which the cold exercises directly upon the nervous system, proceed the placidity and mildness of the inhabitants of the polar regions. Dr. Rink de Pink's certain Eskimo tribes are so pacific and placid that they have not even a word for quarrel, their strongest reaction to an affront being merely silence. Larry notices that on the retreat from Moscow, the snows of Russia made weakling sniffing cowards of soldiers whom, up to that time, neither danger, wounds, nor hunger have been able to shake. Bove relates that among the Chukchi at 40 degrees below zero, there are no quarrels, acts of violence, or crimes. Prayer, the bold polar traveller, notes how at the same temperature his will became paralysed, his senses dulled, and his speech embarrassed. This explains why not only despotic Russia, but also liberal Scandinavian countries have rarely experienced revolutions. Subchapter 3. Influence of Modern Temperature 
The influence which is most apt to reduce a disposition towards rebellion and crime is that of a relatively moderate degree of heat. This is confirmed by a study of the psychology of the peoples of southern Europe, which shows us that they tend to be unstable and to subordinate the interests of the community and state to the individual. This is doubtless because heat excites the nervous centres as alcohol does, without, however, arriving at the point of producing apathy, and further because the climate, without removing human needs entirely, reduces them by increasing the productivity of the soil, at the same time diminishing the necessity for food, clothing, and alcoholic drinks. In the dialect of Parma, the son is called the father of ragamuffins. Daudet, who has written an entire novel, Norma Romestan, to depict the great influence of the climate of southern Europe upon conduct, says, The southerner does not love strong drinks. He is intoxicated by nature. Sun and wind distill in him a terrible natural alcohol to whose influence every one born under this sky is subject. Some have only the mild fever which sets their speech and gesture free, redoubles their audacity, makes everything seem rosy-hued, and drives them on to boasting. Others live in a blind delirium, and what southerner has not felt the sudden giving way, the exhaustion of his whole being, that follows an outburst of rage or enthusiasm. Neri to fossio, napoli a copoli da occhio, remarks that inconstancy is a characteristic of the southern peoples. One at first considers them naive, until suddenly one perceives that they are finished rascals. They are at the same time industrious and lazy, sober and intemperate. In short, their character, at least among the lower classes, has such different aspects and changes so rapidly that it is impossible to fix it. The climate favours the loss of modesty. The people are prolific. The thought of the future of their children does not terrify them. The lazarone steals when he has a chance, but never when there is any risk to be incurred. A boaster he promises ten things and performs one. If he falls into a quarrel, he shouts and gesticulates to arouse fear, though he is afraid himself. He tries to avoid actual fighting, but becomes wild if it comes to actual blows. Jealous, he slashes his wife's face if he dubs her. Independent, he can endure in neither hospitals nor asylums. When he has work, he does it well. He feels a strong affection for his family, contents himself with little, and has not become intoxicated. Crafty, mendacious, and timid, his existence is a series of petty frauds, deceits, and acts of beggary. To get a few cents in arms, he is capable of kissing your shoes without feeling himself humiliated thereby. He is science his superstition. Meeting a hunchback or a blind man conveys a quite definite already. His ideas move in the same circle of God, devil, witches, evil eye, holy trinity, honour, knife, theft, ornaments, and kumora. The masses fear this last, but respect it, for they feel that this despotic power protects them against the other despots. It is the only authority from which they can hope for anything that resembles justice. Subject 4. Crime and Seasons The influence of hate upon certain crimes is then quite comprehensible. It is brought out in Guri statistics that the crime of rape occurs in England and France, oftenest in the hot months, and Curcio has observed the same thing in Italy. Table is displayed on the page, titled Rapes Committed in England, France, and Italy. Additional columns, sections, statistics up between the months of the year. In England, according to Guri, and in Italy, according to Curcio, the maximum number of murders falls in the hottest months. These occurred. A table is displayed on the page, with three columns, listing the months between July, June, August, May, February, March, December, and January, and additional two columns of England and Italy. Poisoning also, according to Guri, occurs oftenest in May. The same phenomenon is reserved in the case of rebellions. In studying, as I have in my political crime, the 836 uprisings that took place in the whole world in the period between 1791 and 1880, one finds that in Asia and Africa, the greatest number falls in July. In Europe and America, the greater prevalence of rebellions in the hot months could not be more clearly marked. In Europe, the maximum proved to be in July, and in South America in January, which are respectively the two hottest months. The minimum falls in Europe in December and January, and in South America in May and June, which again correspond in temperature. If now we pass from the whole of Europe to the particular countries, we still find the greatest number of uprisings in the hot months. July leads in Italy, Spain, Portugal and France, August in Germany, Turkey, England, and, with March, in Greece. March leads in Ireland, Sweden, Norway and Denmark. January in Switzerland, September in Belgium and the Netherlands, April in Russia and Poland, and May in Bosnia. 
Herzegovina, Serbia, and Bulgaria. From this, the influence of the hot months would seem to be greatest in the countries of the south. Subject 5. Seasons. Bringing together by seasons the data of uprisings in Europe during a hundred years, we get the following. A table is displayed on the page with spring, summer, autumn and winter, compared between the nations of Spain, Italy, Portugal, Turkey and Europe, Greece, France, Belgium and the Netherlands, Switzerland, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia and Bulgaria, Ireland, England, Scotland, Germany, Austria, Hungary, Sweden, Norway and Denmark, Poland, Russia and Europe. From this it appears that summer holds the first place in the case of five nations, among all those of the south. In the case of four, including the most northerly, it is spring that leads. In one case, Austro-Hungary, it is autumn, and in one other, Switzerland, it is winter. We find further that five times, and principally in the hottest countries, the winter has more revolutions than the autumn. Eight times it has fewer, and three times an equal number. If we consider America, especially South America, remembering that January there corresponds to our July and February to our August, we shall find the tables displayed on the page with spring, summer, autumn and winter split between America and Europe. We see then that in both hemispheres summer takes the first place, while spring always surpasses both autumn and winter, doubtless as with crimes, because of the first heat, but also because of the diminution of the food supply. Autumn and winter, on the contrary, differ little in the number of revolutions, winter giving in America seven more than autumn, and in Europe two fewer. With regard to crimes, also, spring and summer stand plainly in the first rank. Gary gives the following figures for the occurrence of crimes against persons. A table is displayed on the page, in three columns, listed as in England and in France. He's compared with statistics for winter, spring, summer and autumn. Benoiston de Chateauneau points out that duels in the army are more frequent in the summer. I have proved that the same influence manifests itself in the case of men of genius. Subchapter 6. Hot Years Ferry and his crime in his relation to temperature has proved from a study of the French criminal statistics from 1825 to 1878 that one can deduce an almost complete parallelism between heat and criminality, not only for the different months, but also for years of different degrees of heat. The influence of the temperature on crime from 1825 to 1848 appears to be very pronounced and constant, and is often even greater than that experienced by agricultural production. Since 1848, notwithstanding the most serious agricultural and political disturbances, the coincidence between temperature and criminality becomes from time to time plainly apparent, especially in the case of homicide and murder. This coincidence is to be noted especially in the years 1826, 1829, 1831, 32, 1833, 1837, 1842 to 43, 1844 to 45, 1846, 1858, 1865, 1867 to 68. The connection comes out much more plainly, however, in the statistics of rape and offences against chastity, which followed an even greater degree of annual variations in temperature. This may be seen from the following table. The table is displayed on the page with three columns, with the year between 1830 to 1874, the temperature, and the cases of homicide and rape listed in number. As regards crime against property, there is a marked increase in the winter, theft and forgery being most abundant in January, while the other seasons differ little from one another. Here the influence of the weather is entirely different. Needs increase and the means of satisfying them diminishes. Subchapter 7. Criminal Calendars Lacazane, Chosinod, and Mori, in confirmation of this contention, have constructed, with the aid of the statistics of each individual crime, real criminal calendars upon the model of the bottom's calendars of flora. Among the crimes against persons, infanticide holds first place in the months of January, February, March, and April. 647, 750, 783, 662, which corresponds to the greater number of births taking place in the spring. This number falls off somewhat in May, and considerably in June July, to increase again in November and December, through the influence of the carnival. In the months named, we find illegitimate births occurring with great frequency, 1,100, 1,131, 
1095, 1134, as well as abortions. Homicides and assaults reached their maximum in July 1716. Parasites, on the contrary, are more numerous in January and October. June is a month which appears a great influence on the temperature on the number of rapes practiced upon children. May, July, and August coming after it. 2,671, 2,175, 2,459, 2,238. The minimum falls in December, 993, followed by the other colder months, while the monthly average is 1,684. Rapes upon adults do not follow the same course. The maximum is in June, 1,078. The minimum in November, 534. They increase in December and January, 584. Apparently as a result of the carnival, they remain stationary in February, 616, and increase in March and May, 904, while the monthly average is 693. Assaults are distributed regularly because they are least influenced by the climate. They increase in February, 931, decrease during the following months, 840, 467, to rise again in May, 983, June, 958, going down July, 919, rising once more in August, 997, and September, 993, to undergo a new decrease in November and December, 886. In the case of crimes against property, the variations are not so pronounced. Though they are more numerous by 3,000 cases in December and January, 16,879 and 16,396, and the cold season generally than in April, 13,491, and in the hot season, the monthly average is 14,630. Plainly, it is not here a question of the direct effect of the cold, but rather an increase of needs in winter and diminution of the means of satisfying them, so the motives for theft are more abundant. From the investigations of Maury, it is possible to arrive at the following conclusions with regard to the individual months. In March, infanticide holds the first place, accounting for 1,193 crimes out of 10,000. Then comes in order rape, 1,115 cases, substitution of children and concealment of birth, 1,019, kidnapping, 1,054, and threatening letters, 997. In May, vagrancy comes first, 1,257, then rapes and offences against chastity, 1,150, then it comes poisoning, 1,144, and finally rape of minors, 1,106. This last crime, under the influence of the heat, rises abruptly to the fourth place in May, having been only 35th in March and 10th in April and reaches the second place in June, with 1,303 cases. In June, the first place is held by the enabless crime of rape upon adults, 1,313. The fourth place also belongs to a sexual offence, abortion, 1,080, while parasite occupies the third place, 1,151. In July, rape of minors rises to the first place, 1,330, and the other most numerous crimes are of a similar kind. Kidnapping, 1,118, and offence against chastity, 1,093. The third place comes bodily injuries to blood relatives, with 1,100 cases. In August, sexual crimes recede to the third place, being the first to crop burning. This, however, is caused not so much by the temperature as by the opportunity. For the harvest time, it is easiest for the workman to revenge himself upon the landlord. However, as Moray rightly observes, it is not without its responsibility for the appearance of this passionate tendency. The crimes may be responsible for the fact that perjury becomes rarer than subordination of minors. In September, brutal passions become less violent. Sexual assaults upon children move to the 15th place, and those upon adults to the 25th, while theft and breach of trust take the 4th place. Embezzlement and bribery have the first place in September and October, for in those months rents fall due and accounts are settled. The numerous substitutions and concealments of newborn children correspond to the greater number of births. From October to January, murder, parasite and highway robbery are more frequent, since the nights are long and the fields deserted. In November, business resumes its full activity, and as a consequence, falsification of accounts and bribery increase. 
in January, the passing of counterfeit money and the robbing of churches takes the first place. Apparently, O.K. Okay, the dark days. In February, infanticide and the concealment of birth break out again, corresponding to the increased birth rate. Sexual crimes having fallen in October to the 28th place and rapes upon adults to the 29th rise in November to the 24th and 26th places respectively. There can be no doubt of the influence of heat upon crimes of passion. I prove this in another way, first by consulting the registers of five great Italian prisons, where the punishments inflicted were for rioting, fighting, and violence against persons, and secondly from the observations made by Virgilio in the penal institution at a during a period of five years. The following figures show that acts of violence are much more numerous in the hot months. The table is displayed on the page, citing all months of the year. One obtains similar figures in insane asylums by keeping in count of the acute attacks of the insane. The table is displayed on the page. We have three columns, the maximum and the minimum, the list of months and the years. Subchapter 8. Excessive Heat Excessive heat, on the contrary, especially when coupled with humidity, exercises a slighter influence. Core observed with regard to the crimes of the Creoles in Guadalupe that when the maximum temperature is reached, July 5th, 85 degrees, there is a minimum of crime, especially against persons, while in March, with a temperature of 62 degrees, there is a maximum number of criminals. We have here, then, an aversion like that which too great heat produces in the case of revolutions, and this because moist heat, when excessive, acts as a depressant, while moderate cold, on the contrary, acts as a stimulant. There were crimes against property in the hot season, 51, in the cold season, 53, crimes against persons in the hot season, 23, in the cold season, 48. Corps observes also that the month of June furnishes the largest number of crimes against persons, and January the smallest. Subchapter 9. Other Meteorological Influences Superintendents of prisons have generally observed that the inmates are more excited when storms are approaching and during the first quarter of the moon. I myself is not sufficient data to prove this, but as the insane, who have numerous points of contact with criminals, are very sensitive to the influence of temperature and respond quickly to the variations of the barometer and of the moon, it is therefore very probable that the same is true of criminals. One fact, however, has proved to me that organic influences are at work at the same time as meteorological. For several years I have noted day by day the criminals received into the jails of Turin, and have always found that upon corresponding days in different years, there have entered a remarkable number of individuals, 10 to 15, with the same bodily peculiarity, persons who had a hernia, or were asymmetric, blonde or brunette, though often coming from different provinces. Entirely different groups were to be found within the days of the same week, when therefore there was no significant change in the influence of the temperature. In recent years, economic and political influences have come to the front and have reduced meteorological causes to the second rate. Thus, in France, the effect of the mean annual temperature upon revolts evident in the past has decreased in the last few years, while northern Europe, Russia, Denmark, on the other hand, although under the same climatic conditions, has had several uprisings. But nevertheless, the effect of the weather cannot be doubted. Subchapter 10. Crimes and Rebellions in Hot Countries in all this, the preponderance influence of temperature is plainly evident, even if it is not exclusive, and this may be seen still better from the geographical distribution of crimes and political rebellions. In the southern parts of Italy and France, there occur many more crimes against persons than in the central and northern portions. We shall return to this fact again in speaking of brigandage and of the Comora. Guerrier has shown that crimes against persons are twice as numerous in southern France, 4.9, as in central and northern France, 2.7 and 2.9. Vice versa, crimes against property are more frequent in the north, 4.9, than in the central and southern regions, 2.3. In Italy, there occur, my table is displayed on the page, titled, For Each 100,000 Inhabitants. The table displays three columns with indictments for crime, homicides, highway robberies with a homicide, and aggravated theft. These are divided up between Northern Italy, Central Italy, Southern Italy, and Insular Italy. Liguria, simply because of its warmer climate, shows a greater number of crimes against persons than the rest of North Italy. In the period from 1875 to 84, 
maximum number of crimes was furnished by Latium, and the next highest number by the Elans. The minimum occurred in the north, with 512 crimes to the 100,000 inhabitants in Piedmont and 689 in Lombardy, while Latium showed 1,537, Sardinia 1,293, and Calabria 1,287. We find the greatest number of homicides exclusively in the south and upon the islands. In Russia, infanticide and stealing from churches are most numerous in the southeast, while homicide and especially parasite occurs with a frequency that increases as one goes from the northeast to the southwest. Anachin. Holzendorf estimates that murder is 15 times as frequent in the southern states of North America as in the northern states. So in the north of England, there is one homicide to 66,000 inhabitants, and in the south one homicide from 4,000 and 6,000 inhabitants. In Texas, according to Redfield, in 15 years, there were 7,000 homicides to 818,000 inhabitants. Even the school children were frequently provided with dangerous weapons. In studying the distribution of simple and aggravated homicides in Europe, we find the highest figures in Italy and the other southern countries, and the lowest in the more northerly regions, England, Denmark, Germany. The same can be said of political uprisings in all Europe. We can see, in fact, that the number of crimes increases as we go from north to south, and in the same measure as the heat increases. We find the maximum in Greece, which with a population of 10 millions, shows 95 revolutions, and the minimum in Russia, for which on the basis of the same population, the number would be only 0.8. We note that the smallest number is to be found in the northern countries, England and Scotland, Germany, Poland, Sweden, Norway and Denmark and the largest in the southern countries, Portugal, Spain, Turkey and Europe, and southern and central Italy, intermediate numbers in the regions lying between. Grouping the figures in this way we find, in northern Europe about 12 revolts to 10 million inhabitants, in central 25 revolts to 10 million inhabitants, in southern Europe about 56 revolts to 10 million inhabitants. Considering Italy separately we find, in northern Italy, 27 revolts to 10 million inhabitants. In central Italy, 32 revolts to 10 million inhabitants. In southern Italy, 33 revolts to 10 million inhabitants, including 17 in Corsica, Sardinia and Sicily. Arranging these crimes by degrees of latitude and figuring their ratio to the population, we arrive at the following table. The table is displayed on the page with three main columns, the degrees of latitude, in Spain and Italy to 100,000 inhabitants. These are further divided up between the number of crimes committed and faults against officers of the law and crimes against persons, resistance to officers and homicides. From this table, the influence of the climate is plainly to be seen. It is modified only by the influence of the capital, 1 and 2, and other great cities, 3 and 4. Aggravated theft occurs in Spain in the north, Santander, Leon, in the south, and in the centre with nearly equal frequency, as often in Cadiz, as in Badojas, Caceres, and Salamanca, because these crimes depend less upon climate than upon opportunity. For the same reason, infanticide and parasite are more numerous in the central provinces, where the capital is, and in the north, the same is true in France and Italy, and in Europe generally. In Italy, we see from the investigations of Ferry that in all southern Italy and the islands, with the exception of Sardinia, the influence of the heat is dominant in the number of simple homicides, and with the added exception of Forli, in the case of aggravated homicides also. So likewise, murders increase in southern Italy and the islands, with the exception of the regions colonised by the Greeks at the provinces of Apuli, Catania, Messina, etc. Assaults also vary according to the same law, except in the case of Sardinia, where they are less numerous than would be expected, and of Liguria, where they are more so. Parasites follow a similar course. They are very numerous in southern and in insular Italy, with the exception of the Greek portion, but very numerous also in the heart of Piedmont. Poisonings abound equally in the islands and in the heart of Calabria, but here the climb is plainly not responsible. Infanticide is likewise very frequent in Calabria and Sardinia, but it rages also in Abruzzo and Piedmont, showing itself to a certain extent independent of the climate. Highway robbery accompanied by homicide is, for the same reasons, very abundant in Upper Piedmont, in Massa and Port Maurice, as upon the extreme boundaries of Italy and in the islands. 
aggravated theft common in Sardinia and Calabria, and at Rome shows another maximum of Venice, Ferrara, Rovigo, Padua, and Bologna, and is accordingly almost independent of the climate. The same climatic principle holds in France, where murders and homicides are most prevalent in the south, with some exceptions that may be explained by racial influence. Parasite and fanicide, on the contrary, are most numerous in scattered districts in north, centre and south alike, not from any climatic influence, but essentially because occasional causes are at work in these places. End of section 1